Well, hello and welcome to Always Analog, where we explore the beauty of analog technology in the digital world. On the table today is a 1938 Royal Deluxe Portable Typewriter. And I have to say that this is just a beautiful machine um, in form and in function. But I think what is most striking about it is really its design. Um, really beautiful, uh, done in a glossy black kind of texturalized um, finish. I'll let the autofocus kick in and give you a little better idea of the, 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 the paint finish. It's kind of got this crackle finish to it and then accented in chrome uh, with a chrome band across the top and also on the bottom edge. And uh, just a beautiful machine. Um, this is Again, 1938, um, it would have been the depression here in the US. Very tough economy. Uh, buying a machine like this was not uh, something that everybody could do, but um, uh, those who had the means were able to really purchase something not only beautiful, but quite lasting. So. We'll take a look at some of these features um, on this Royal and we'll start with the keyboard itself. So these have got, this uh, Royal Deluxe has got the round keys um, that have uh, glass tops and then with the stainless steel um, ring around them. Um, it is a, what would be considered a full keyboard. Uh, you will notice uh, be, there is no number one. Uh, we use the lowercase l uh, in place of that. And uh, it has the um, apostrophe uh, over the eight as an uppercase. Uh, over here we have the colon and semicolon um, it does have a tab feature, and there's a tab button uh, right there, uh, backspace, margin release, and then of course a shift with the shift lock that's released like so. Um, you will notice when I shift that this is a carriage shift model. So this is prior to them going to the basket shift, which is where the key actual key basket goes up and down. Um, in this case, the whole carriage goes up and down. This is a harder shift physically. I mean, it, the, the, the carriage and its mechanism weighs much more than the basket. And so you, you got to put a little pressure down to, uh, to, to make a, an upper shift on this machine, but that was the design until the um, basket shift style became the standard. So while well, I've got the, the hood open, let's take a look at some of the, the controls on the front. This is your ribbon selector uh, here. Middle position is black. To the left is red. To the right, you have to push down so that you, it, you can't just sort of slide over on its own. It's a push down and a slide over, and that puts it on the stenciling uh, position. Uh, I have a single color ribbon in here at the moment, just black, so it's only typing in black. But if you didn't use red, you could, you know, when the upper part of the ribbon started to fade and wear, you could switch to red and then it would start using the lower half of the ribbon. 
so you could get the whole use out of it. It does have a touch control feature that is on the front, um, minus plus, so light touch to firm touch, and then you move the selector accordingly. And then over here, this is the ribbon reverse. So it doesn't have an automatic ribbon reverse, but if you want the ribbon spool to change direction, you simply move it one way or the other in order for it to start changing direction. Let's look down inside the machine. Again, we see the keys. This is a pica <clears throat> font, uh, so 10 characters per inch. Um, I should say, when you know, very rarely do I get a typewriter that looks like this when I get it. So it did require a fair amount of cleaning and adjusting. Um, <clears throat> but uh, it was a overall very well-functioning machine. So here we have the platen, and we have some features including the paper bale. Some of the lesser expensive machines did not have a paper bale. This one has a paper bale. Um, it has our space bar here, one, two, and you have a selector here, which single space or double space is the option. Here's your paper guide right here, which you could slide. Now, if you flip this back, that is how you set the margins right there. So as an example, if we wanted to set the left margin a little narrower, we'd move it so, press this button down and slide. Same with the right hand margin, press down and slide. This is before the magic margin um, feature that Royal had patented and had used uh, on most of its machines after that where it was simply a lever control on either side and it used a spring mechanism to set the margins. This had to be set this way. You'd, um, you would just flip that back. Uh, let's see. Um, we have a... Uh, this is the paper release uh, so that you can pull the paper out uh, or adjust it. Yeah, very, very nice machine. If we'll go around the back here and take a look, and here we have still very clear Royal Typewriter Company, New York, made in the United States of America. Um, let's see. I don't have, let me, let me do it this way, we can get a little bit more light on it. This is your tab, tabulature um, settings here. So these are your tabs. Again, this is how you would set the tabs from back here. It was not a way to do it um, from the keyboard automatically or with a key. It was a manual set and these little, these little, um, whoop, there we go, these little stops here were the tab stops. And there's one, two, uh, looks like there's two more down here at the end, four total. And hard to see, but there is the a scale on top of this bar, so you could kind of see if you wanted to uh, set the first tab, say, at 10, you would just slide it, push it and slide it in place to you get to 10 and so on. So that's just how they work. Um, but again, it was a manual setting. So this is the 1938 Royal Deluxe. And uh, again, this would have been a higher end portable. And what we're gonna do next is do a little typing on it. Okay, so now we're going to do a little typing here on our, our Royal Deluxe. Let me put some paper 
in here. Let's see where my margins are at. Okay, I think we'll be all right here for now. So, let's see. We'll double space that. Mm -hmm. Whoop. Well, my period is sticking a little bit there. But uh, let's see, let's see, we zoom in a little bit here. And you can see we've got a nice pica font. Nice. Now I have it on a little bit of a lighter control um, in terms of the touch control feature, but uh, types very nicely. And you know, you can, you can, it, it's a heavy little typewriter. Um, There it is. This is the whoop, Royal Deluxe. Very nice. Well, a very nice example of a 1930s typewriter uh, here, one of the great American manufacturers, Royal, and uh, a beautifully designed machine. So thank you for taking a closer look at it with me, and we'll see you again right here on Always Analog.